Hi Heidi, this is Donna Eberly and this one's for you. This is what your screen should look like when you open up that quiz. If you look under Edit Class, you'll see that you have all of your kids' names in there. Now, the link up here that says Class Homepage where I'm pointing, this is very important. This is how the kids can get to your page. So you want to copy that and paste it and either send it in an email or put it on your school web page or write it on the board, which is a long one to the right, but somehow get this to them so they can just click on it if at all possible. You'll notice that I don't use passwords because my kids don't take each other's tests, but if you wanted passwords, that would be how you would get them. Okay, and then the other thing we wanted to do is learn how to give this class some tests. So, so far, these are the tests that I've given to my class. But if you look down here at these common tests, let's maybe do integers. One of the things I think that you probably would love this for is a time multiplication test. What I do is I click on arith integers, arithmetic, and then let's just say I want to do multiplication simply. But you know those 100 question uh, worksheets we do. And at level 10 means that it goes to 10 times 10. You could go up to very big numbers at level 100, but and 12 goes up to the 12s. I tend to keep it right on the 10, so it's everything through 10 times 10. And then the timer currently is set for none. You can set this for five minutes or 10 minutes. I find at the seventh grade level, everybody can finish it in 10 minutes with an 80% or above. So that's usually where I sign it. Now, this is set currently at my first hour Everly class. If I can assign the test to just them by clicking the assign test button that I'm on currently, or maybe I want all my classes to have a little review about their multiplication tables because it never gets to be too much. And then I click Assign Test, and then you can see it's right there on the top of their list of tests to take. Now, if you look at our categories under integers, we have arithmetic, we have inequalities that you can do with addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. You can add negative integers with your fifth graders and as well as absolute value if you're doing some of those things. Um, one of the things I'm going to give right now is a little bit of absolute value work because um, they actually need a little bit more experience with that. So I've just simply done the absolute value and negatives and I'm going to make it a addition. So they're going to add them and then tell me whether they're greater than or less than. And again, I'm going to assign that to all my classes. Okay, the next one you can see it's right here. The next one thing you do is kind of go through here and see what's available. Whenever we teach range, mean, median, and mode, those are very helpful. You can do with fractions, decimals, and uh, whole numbers or integers. Integers with negatives or without. Uh, exponents is here. Again, you would probably not use roots or logarithms, but exponents are there. You can practice that instead of a worksheet. We've got factors for whether it's prime or uh, composite. You can also find the prime factors of numbers or the greatest common factor or the least common multiple, right? I'm actually going to give one least common multiple uh, test today because that's one of the things we're working on. And I'm going to name it what I want it to be called, which is LCM. And that one, I'm not going to do level one for my kids because that looks pretty easy. You can see all the levels I have to choose from here. Now, that one got a little hard, so I'm going to come down. That looks reasonable for my kids, so I'm going to sign the test. So you see you have a lot of variety of the things that you're allowed to put on here. Um, you can go through algebra, solving for y or x. Then we can go to fractions, which is, I know, one of the things you spend a lot of time on. They can simply identify fractions, and you can have them have to click to fill it in, use ratios, number lines. This particular page is just amazingly good for all kids. If you're going to have them fill it in, or if they're going to look at ratios, if they can do a number line, you can do a variety of all of those. It can include reciprocals or decimals. Um, and then you can have to also put things in order, which is great for kids and a little higher level thinking skills. Um, we also have arithmetic that you can do with fractions, as well as mixed fractions, decimals, and percents. We have inequalities here, averages, again with fractions. You can simplify. Now this is a skill that I know you spend a lot of time working on. I'm going to give just 10 problems in fractions to simplify, but I'm going to take it up a few levels. 
I want to make sure that my kids can work in a little bit bigger numbers and get those in simplest forms. So I'm going to call this one Simplify so they remember what they're doing. And then I'm going to assign the test to all my classes. Okay, the other thing I wanted to show you while we're together is after you've explored all of these things, and I know you're teaching science now, so there are some things about cells, anatomies, elements, and conversions, and I love the geography ones where they're actually looking at the continents and matching in the particular countries or rivers. The other place you can go is you can browse. Now, one of the things when you click on browse that comes up is a list of all the things that teachers do. You need to use the search bar, and I'm going to come up here and search LCD least common denominator and see what comes up. Oh, I'm going to have to call it least common denominator. I know you think that it's hard to believe I still work on that, but I do. Okay, so now this one obviously has a lot of variables in it, and that's a high school test, so I'm not going to pick that one. Um, this one is a fifth grade academic vocabulary test for math. That might be good. Um, fifth grade here. I'm just kind of looking through for something that might be good for me. All right, let's say I want to look at this junior high one, pre-lesson 25. When I click on it, it comes up and it shows me that this is some a PowerPoint that someone made up, okay, and they have to actually write the answers in on a three question. That's his, how he starts his lesson. Well, that's really not what I want, so I'm going to close that one. I'm going to go back and look for you at this fifth grade math academic vocabulary, and we're going to just look at it, a number that's a denominator for two or more fractions. Okay, well, I want to know that that's the least common denominator. This is kind of good for my kids, just a review of some of the words that we use. So I'm going to take this one and say, okay, I kind of like that one, even though it says fifth grade. So I'm going to come down here in this browse section and assign that. Okay, so now look at the title. It says fifth grade. I don't want it to say that to my kids because right away they're going to think, oh, this is crazy. So I'm going to come up here, I'm going to go back one more time. Let me go to see tests. Do you see here I can put a mark in the box and I can edit it. Now up comes all of the information about that particular test. I'm going to get rid of the word fifth grade. You might want to get rid of the fifth grade word if you're using it with fourth graders. Um, my instructions could go here, I don't have any. It says it can save work to finish later, always save the grades. No, I save grades when score is above 70%. Because if they don't do that well, I want them to go back. This one says, I also like this one, students may navigate backwards, but they can't change the answers. That way they can see what they did wrong. And I like them to show the right or wrong while testing so they know right away how they did. So now I kind of like this. Looks like it's a good thing to me. All right. So I'm going to actually then uh, save it that way. Now you can see I changed the name, but I want to share that with the rest of my seventh grade classes. So I'm going to go to share, and I'm going to make a copy for, I can pick all my other classes, which it would include a couple eighth grade classes, and I actually think I'm going to do that. So now if you look at Everly 1, it looks like that, but Everly 3, those tests that I added today are right here. Okay, So they have actually gone on all of my classes so that I only had to assign it once to hit all of my kids. Now, you can also design your test to go here. This is one that we've designed, but if you come up here, your choices are matching, and you can put what you want here and match it with there. Okay, I'm going to cancel this one. Or you can do questions, where you put in a question and your multiple choice answers here. I'm going to cancel that one. Or you can use slides if you uh, want to actually create a slide. And this is actually pretty easy to do. You write your question up here and your answer here, and then you put your answer there, and that ends up in the box. So you can play with that a little bit. I actually have only made one in all the years that I've uh, been using this program. Dana, the teacher I teach with, um, Dana Shepard uses that makes them quite a bit. She's very good at it, so I, it's not hard. I just don't do it very much. I do use the Browse button to see what's out there, what other kids have made. And you can see human body systems here in an elementary school. They do have teachers out there that have made them about all kinds of things. So since you're teaching science, I don't know if you do this, but you might want to also use that quiz and kind of check out what science topics are there for you. All right, I hope this has helped. Now, let's go through this. This is where you see your tests. This is where, let me go to my first hour class so you can see, well, they're all there, I guess. This is the grades that the kids have earned on the ones that I've given them so far. 
If I ever want to edit a class or add students or take students out, I can do it here. Remember, I can add passwords here. And this link is what they need to be able to get to their names. This link they need. Okay, and then we have a new class. If you want to put a new class together for science or something you don't have registered yet. Again, the way I learned this program was just clicking on the side, clicking for any of the possibilities. Um, maybe you want to do a triplet. In, we can do addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Some of these are going to have to know order of operations for depending on the level you do. Um, so you have unlimited possibilities. Now let's say I kind of like a test, but I don't, I don't ever give 20, I give 10. I figure if they can do 10, they can probably do enough. But let's say I don't like those numbers. Well, what I can do is I can regenerate, and then I get new numbers. So you have all kinds of possibilities. I usually do set the order on random so that when they're working next to each other, the questions come up at different times for different kids. And I don't usually set a timer except for when I'm using multiplication. Well, I hope this has helped. I hope that I can figure out how to get this to you and um, enjoy that quiz. Take care. Bye.